The Egyptian army kept up the pressure on the Muslim Brotherhood Tuesday with the arrest of its spiritual leader. Also, health officials have discovered the source of a massive salmonella outbreak. And I'll have my latest forecast for Wednesday. But first, in the West, nearly three dozen wildfires burn across nine states. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dustin Kopp. Our top story at this hour, hundreds of families have been evacuated and thousands of firefighters are on the front lines. As Mark T Martin shows us, firefighting resources are stretched thin and the weather could create more problems. Orange everywhere. Yeah. Donna Carlquist and her husband wait to go back home. One of 400 families evacuated when the Swedes fire in Northern California ignited. Like other fires in the West, it plowed through rough terrain and climbed steep hills. The wildfires have burned thousands of acres and destroyed buildings. Um, it's been hot, dry, windy, it's been keeping us busy the last couple days. We haven't been getting a lot of sleep, but we're getting it done. More than 900 firefighters are battling the Swedes fire alone. All night long, the firefighters have been on the front lines uh, building containment around this fire. We're making real good progress on this fire. Another one firefighters are making progress on is the wildfire in Idaho, which threatens homes in the resort towns of Ketchum and Sun Valley. All at once, everyone tried to get out of here, and I mean, it still looks like a ghost town around here. However, thanks to attacks from the air and ground, authorities in Idaho are now letting residents living near this 160 square mile wildfire cautiously head back home. A mandatory evacuation order has been lifted for Ketchum, Sun Valley and Haley. The thousands of firefighters battling the flames across the west also look to the skies, preparing for possible severe weather with strong winds and lightning strikes that could make things worse in a moment by feasting on dry conditions. We really want to watch that weather closely to ensure that we don't have any embers uh, thrown over our line in this fire to take another runoff. Mark Martin, CBN News. The American Red Cross will be having a blood drive at the Farmington Huddle House on Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. To make an appointment, visit redcrossblood.org and enter keyword Huddle House. Huddle House is located at 305 East Karsh Boulevard in Farmington. Circuit Court Judge Kenneth Pratt has denied an Iron Mountain Lake woman's request for a bond reduction. Kevin Chase, Marsha Rulo's public defender, asked the judge to reduce the bond from $250,000 cash only. She has been charged with first-degree assault, armed criminal action, and three counts of endangering the welfare of a child in connection with the incident in her home on March 10th. A trial has been set for May 28th and 29th. An eastern Missouri woman has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for trying to hire a hitman to kill her estranged husband. 39-year-old Annette Bernia of Park Hills was sentenced after pleading guilty to attempted second-degree murder. Prosecutors say Bernia solicited a relative to kill her husband, but instead he contacted police. An undercover officer posed as a hitman, and Bernia paid him $200 to kill her husband, Kevin. He, she also promised to give the hitman her husband's boat and NASCAR collection. Right now we're seeing temperatures in the 80s. Not too bad out there. It was a warmer day today than what we've seen. And we're going to continue to see a little bit of that warmer air in southeast Missouri. Looking at your forecast throughout the evening hours, 81 degrees with a partly sunny sky at 7 p.m. Clear skies by 9 and 76 by midnight. Still seeing a clear sky and a low, our temperature around 70 rather. We'll continue to monitor the clear skies for the next several days. I'll let you know about that coming up later in your Storm Tracker weather forecast. Up next, the Egyptian army kept up the pressure on the Muslim Brotherhood Tuesday with the arrest of its spiritual leader. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News. This is coverage you can count on. We all need to take responsibility in our lives uh, and start thinking about how do we want to be treated at the end of our lives. I would definitely say Serenity Hospice Care is an expert in their field. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there's help a phone call away. If it were me and I was diagnosed with a terminal illness, I absolutely, you know, I would choose Serenity Hospice Care. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins and Dustin Kopp. 18 Eyewitness News continues. Welcome back. The Egyptian army kept up the pressure on the Muslim Brotherhood Tuesday with the arrest of its spiritual leader, Muhammad al-Baidi. 
The arrest comes after 25 Egyptian police officers were murdered execution style in the Sinai Peninsula. Chris Mitchell reports. Body's arrest is another blow to the Muslim Brotherhood. Egyptian police are charging Body with incitement in June when eight protesters died. In 2012, the Simon Wiesenthal Center chose Body as its top anti-Semite when he recommended holy jihad against the Jews. Earlier, authorities returned the remains of 25 police officers to Cairo after an Islamic terror attack in the Sinai Peninsula. Officials said the terrorists stopped two buses carrying the officers, ordered them on the ground, and shot them. The attack highlighted the anarchy in the Sinai. Indeed, we believe there are several thousand al-Qaeda combatants right now in the Sinai, and there'll be in other places as well. When you have the kind of chaos, anarchy, and carnage you're seeing right now in Egypt and in Syria, and uh, not so great in places like Somalia, uh, you're getting into a very dangerous situation. In Cairo, a court ordered the release of former Egyptian President Mubarak, but it appears the former leader will remain in custody for another two weeks pending a judicial review. When Mubarak was in power, he warned about the Muslim Brotherhood and other Islamic groups. These groups don't ever believe they want democracy or anything like that. They are exploiting democracy in order to eliminate democracy. And if they ever do govern, it will be an ugly dictatorship. According to an Israeli newspaper, the U.S. is secretly planning to cut aid to Egypt pending a review. One former Israeli diplomat told CBN News, the current regime wants to be pro-Western, but if Europe and the U.S. cut aid, Russian President Vladimir Putin will gladly offer aid to the Arab world's most influential nation. He can't understand the support the U.S. and Europe are giving the Muslim Brotherhood, which he says has declared war on the West. An Israeli official told CBN News it believes Europe and the U.S. should continue to support the military-backed government since the military is the only hope to prevent further chaos in Egypt and restore stability. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. The president of Missouri State University is scheduled to have surgery Wednesday for prostate cancer. Cliff Smart made the announcement Monday in an email to the university community as the fall semester opened. Smart says he was diagnosed with early stage prostate cancer several weeks ago. He says he and his doctors believe he'll make a fast and full recovery. Smart was diagnosed following a yearly screening for the cancer. Smart was named Missouri State President last October after serving more than a year as interim president. He was previously the university's general counsel. A jury in San Francisco County has found a Farmington man not guilty of stealing. Juries deliberated for two hours before finding 42-year-old John Geiler not guilty of Class C felony of stealing. He had been charged as a prior and persistent offender. Geiler was accused of stealing thousands of dollars worth of shingles, siding, and trim three years ago from the old Bonterre Elementary, which is owned by Cheryl Shershikan. A man testified that he and Geiler, an employee of Shershikan, at the time loaded up the construction equipment and took it. Geiler has prior convictions from the 1990s for attempted arson, forgery, and three counts of stealing. New details are coming about after a Harrisburg man died Saturday on the current river. 52-year-old Christopher Resloff drowned after being knocked off his raft by a tree branch about 200 yards north of a bridge in Van Buren on the current river. He was pronounced dead at 7.05 p.m. This comes nearly two months after another drowning in the same part of the current river. This is the fourth drowning in the current river in the past three years. Up next on 18 Eyewitness News, health officials have discovered the source of a massive salmonella outbreak. Details when 18 Eyewitness News comes back. Take control of your future by enrolling at the Unitech Career Center. Discover a new career with Unitech's nursing programs or the opportunities with Unitech's sheet metal fabricating program. Or turn your hobby into a career with Unitech's power sports equipment program. From electrical trades to automotive technology programs, the first step to a well-paying future starts at the Unitech Career Center, Raider Road in Bonterre. For adult information, call 358-3011. For high school information, call 358-2271. Health officials have discovered the source of a massive salmonella outbreak that has swept across 37 states. 
The salmonella strain has been traced to a poultry hatchery in, the New, in New Mexico. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say cases of salmonella have been reported from California to New York since March, sickening over 300 people. No deaths have been reported, but at least 51 people have been hospitalized. About 60% of the cases have been in children younger than 11 years old, including seven babies in New Mexico. The strain was traced to Privet Hatchery in Portales, New Mexico. The hatchery sells live baby chickens, ducks, and other poultry by mail and supplies them to feed stores. People need to realize even if they look healthy, they may still be carrying salmonella. A lot of these cases, the parents bought these young baby poultry at the feed store and then allowed them to run around in the kitchen floor along with the children. Health officials caution people to wash their hands after ha handling live poultry. Danny Katowski remembers what it was like to be a patient at Shriners Hospital for children, and now she wants to give back to the hospital to, that gave her the ability to walk. Danny tells 18 Eyewitness News what she is trying to do to help. Right now, we are really pushing for donations that are geared toward more the adolescent. They always get an outpouring of just love and, and items for, for the younger kids, but people tend to forget that there are adolescents there as well. So being that Shriners is a nonprofit organization completely, they really don't have it in their budget to purchase all these post-op gifts or rewards or anything to build up their morale. Not only was Danny born with a club right foot, she was also missing two toes, a growth plate, ligaments, bone density and muscle mass and as a result her right leg was substantially shorter than her left at nine months old she had the first of countless surgeries at shriners hospital in st louis more information on danny's story can be found on our website kdkz18.com president obama may have to go along with reforms at the national security agency members of congress are pushing for changes in how the nsa operates that comes after the Washington Post reported that the agency broke privacy rules overstepping its legal bounds thousands of times over the last five years. The report was based on top secret documents provided by NSA leaker Edward Snowden. President Obama has repeatedly said Congress has been thoroughly briefed on the NSA surveillance programs, but some lawmakers doubt they're getting the full story. When we come back, I'll be laying a storm tracker weather forecast. What does your Wednesday look like? Details when we come back. On the road, off the road, or on the water, your ultimate outdoor toy store, Midwest Sports Center in Farmington, has what you're looking for. Street bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, side-by-sides, jet skis. Midwest Sports Center has the largest selection and the absolute lowest prices. Get to Midwest Sports Center on Walker Drive, Farmington today to see for yourself. Midwest Sports Center, your ultimate outdoor toy store. Here is your storm tracker forecast. And welcome back. Partly sunny sky out there right now at a temperature of 83, but it feels like 85 out there. Not too bad out there at all. Just a little bit warmer than what we've been seeing. Dew point right now at 65 with 54% humidity and a southeast wind at 3 miles per hour. Throughout the area, plenty of sunshine. Temperatures on the nice side 84 in St. Genevieve, Fredertown 83, as well as in Potosi and Piedmont and Ellington calling in 83 right now. Temperatures across the state of Missouri, not too bad as well. 84 in Columbia, 87 in Kansas City, Springfield at 83 degrees, and right now in St. Louis, 84 degrees. So not too bad out there at all. Sunshine will continue. We're also going to see those temperatures warming up just a little bit. It looks like summer is back in the picture for a while, but we should start cooling things down. That warmer air is pushing in. We're going to have plenty of sunshine showers off to the south. It's just going to be another summer day here in southeast Missouri on your Wednesday. Here's what our forecast looks like throughout the evening. Partly cloudy sky at 7 p.m., 81 degrees, and clearing out throughout the evening, 76 degrees at 9 p.m. by midnight down to 70. For tonight, not a bad evening at all. We're going to see a clear sky, low around 63 to 67. Light to variable winds, beautiful evening on tap. Forecast for tomorrow, it's going to be a warm day here in southeast Missouri, but mostly sunny, 88 to 90 degrees, light to variable winds. Let's take a look at the next three days here in southeast Missouri. Thursday, plenty of sunshine, partly sunny, 90, a little bit cooler, 89 on your Friday. 
with plenty of sunshine, partly sunny. But the next several days show, we're going to continue to see that sh sunshine throughout the area. Temperatures in the lower 90s through the weekend. But by Monday of next week, we're starting to cool off into the 80s. Don't forget, you can get the latest weather information at our website. That is KDKZ18.com. I'm Stacy Johnson. What do you get when you combine your emotions with your money? More often than not, a big bill. Things we spend too much on and cheaper alternatives. That's just ahead on Money Talks News. Get your latest storm tracker weather forecast daily on the radio. Froggy 96, 95.9 FM and Kickin' Country 105, 104.9 FM. When you're recovering from a traumatic injury, the last thing you need is an unexpected bill. Because most health insurers pay only a part of air transport. Our chair medical has a solution. The Omni Advantage program. For a membership fee of $49 per year, Omni Advantage guarantees you and other covered family members will not have to pay anything that your health insurer doesn't provide. In an extraordinary emergency, the last thing you need to worry about is cost. Contact Archair Medical or visit them on the web to discover all the advantages of Omni Advantage. And welcome back. Here is this week's Melinda Myers Gardening Moment. Drought and extremely high temperatures can leave your lawn looking like this. If you allow your lawn to go dormant during hot dry spells, leave it dormant until cooler temperatures and rains return so nature can get it growing again. Those lawns taken in and out of dormancy with irregular watering are the most stressed and less likely to recover. Do provide lawns with one quarter inch of water once a month during extended droughts. This keeps the crown of the plant alive without breaking dormancy. Further protect your lawn by minimizing foot and equipment traffic that can injure the drought stress grass. And do not apply weed killers and high nitrogen quick release fertilizers to the lawn in summer. These chemicals can damage your lawn in hot weather. Plus new weeds are the first to replace those the herbicide killed. I'm Melinda Myers. Check out our website for this and other gardening tips. And today's your money. What do you get when you combine emotions with money? A big bill. Things we spend too much on and cheaper alternatives. Money expert Stacy Johnson explains. The average cost of a wedding these days, according to the knot.com, more than $28,000. An awful lot of money for just one party. Then there are funerals. Another expensive tradition. Average cost, according to the National Funeral Directors Association, more than $6,500. It's these once in a lifetime events when emotions meet money that often end up blowing a budget. But you know, if you do a little planning ahead, you can really reduce the cost of these things. For example, from being your own DJ to renting your dress, there are tons of ways to save on weddings. And when it comes to funerals, cremation, a fraction of the cost. And you can even buy a casket from Costco. This isn't just about weddings and funerals. How about new cars? One that's just one year old might save you 15 to 20%. So that means you're essentially paying 15, 20% extra just to get a new car smell. And who says you should pay three months salary for that engagement ring? Oh, that would be De Beers, a cartel that virtually controls their price. Solution, if you can't live without, at least shop them hard. How about food? We too often buy it prepackaged and processed, which means paying more for less nutrition. Or we buy heavily advertised brand names when cheaper generics would do. Then there's clothing. Putting on designer labels makes designers rich, but it doesn't do much for you. So how do we keep from overpaying for all this stuff? Well, in a word, research. <laughs> Whether it's a wedding or groceries, if you'll spend a little more time, you'll probably spend a lot less money. <laughs> Want more things we waste money on and ways to solve those problems? They're waiting for you right here at moneytalksnews.com. Just do a search for Money Wasters. For Money Talks News, I'm Stacy Johnson. As Stacy said, he's got more information and links at his website. To get there, just go to our website and click on the Money Talks link under the Lifestyles menu. We'll be right back. Battery problems. It happens every time you want to do something. You just want to mow the yard, right? You've got to make it to that big meeting on time, and your watch quits. you got to be somewhere, and your car won't start. Right in the middle of a conversation, and the battery conks out on your cell phone for every kind of battery.
Welcome back in today's Your Health. Most of us tend to think of our tonsils like we do our appendix. We're not really sure what the purpose they serve, but if they cause any problems, it's best to just have them removed. Thanks to new research, that attitude is changing. It turns out our tonsils may be much more important than we at first thought. With details, here's Clark Powell. At the height of its popularity around 1960, a child had a tonsillectomy every 30 seconds in this country. That amounted to more than a million surgeries a year. Today, that number has been cut in half as doctors take a longer look at taking tonsils out. The pendulum is swinging completely in the opposite direction now where we're trying to leave them in as long as possible as opposed to take them out early. Doctors say there will always be cases when it's best to take tonsils out, but there may now be an even more compelling argument to leave them in. Researchers at Ohio State's James Cancer Hospital have discovered for the first time that tonsils produce so-called T-cells. T-cells, which are critical to one's defense against infection and cancer, uh, were actually growing quite nicely in the tonsil. It was Dr. Michael Caligiri and his team of researchers who made the discovery. He says until now, it was thought T-cells only developed in the thymus gland, which sits on the heart. But it turns out tonsils make them too. And research into using T-cells against cancer-causing viruses has already proven to be extremely potent. You can take some, someone's T-cells out, rev them up against that virus in the test tube, put them back in, and it can cure the cancer. And now that doctors know there is another source of T-cells in the body, they may start seeing tonsils in a whole new light. At Ohio State's James Cancer Hospital, this is Clark Powell reporting. Uh, uh. Although further studies need to be done, researchers believe this new source of T-cells could help in the research of diseases like arthritis, lymphoma, and even AIDS. The findings of this study are published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation. That is today's Your Health. We'll be right back. And that does it for 18 Eyewitness News. Stay connected with us by visiting our website. It's kdkz18.com. We'll see you next time right back here on 18 Eyewitness News. When you see news happening in your area, let us know about it. You can call our news department at 573-701-9590 or email us at news at dawkinsbroadcastgroup.com.